everybody, I'm Shannon, this is my husband Chris, and we actually wanted to talk to you about our story um, of <laughs> um, divorce, uh, yeah. brokenness, um, no hope whatsoever that, yeah. that our marriage would ever uh, work and or that we would ever be together and be a family again. All that hope was gone and then God brought us back together and here we are today. So we just thought we would you know, share that yeah. story to encourage other people out there that um you know there is hope no matter what you're going through yeah. so you want to kind of start it out <laughs> okay, so this is this is an emotional story for us this is mm -hmm. our story of um <laughs> uh -huh. okay so, sorry about that we, she, she tried to start telling the story and she just got uh, very emotional and so we're gonna, we're gonna give it another shot yeah oops um, <laughs> but, uh, basically our story is we were living the American dream. Um, I had a very good career, a very prestigious career, um, and, um, just a really bright future ahead of me professionally, um, working for a, a very large, you know, uh, high up company in the fortune 500, you know, um, just, just the type of career was, um, you know, it was very high paying and, and all of that stuff. And so we just, we felt like we had it made. We had, you know, vehicles that were paid for. We had, you know, a house that, you know, we had a mortgage and everything, but it was a nice house. Yeah. And um, we had our beautiful little son and she was staying home, mm -hmm. you know, uh, raising our son. And um, just uh, everything looked pretty good, except uh, I was, you know, miserable. I was... Um, I could not find happiness and you know we weren't we weren't rocking walking with the lord at all during that time and so you know i was just miserable and um basically looked for happiness in a bottle you know yeah. <laughs> every day would come home from work and you know i just would just start drinking and I, and I just my drinking became more frequent and it became um you know more like more you know like yeah. i was drinking more often and i was drinking more higher, more in the amount and to to the point that you know it just started affecting um our lives tremendously yeah. and our my work and um you know long, long story short i my my profession was i was in investment management and then you know this was the height of the financial crisis and the great recession and everything came crashing down for us right and um, that was around 2008 yeah, late yeah. late two thousand eight, early two thousand nine. Right. Basically, like I lost my career. We lost everything. Um, the American dream was gone, <laughs> and uh, um, you know, and then we struggled. I struggled for the next uh, three years to, yeah. um, you know, I just could not break the the addiction and um, tried. I went to a lot of, you know, like programs and all that kind of stuff, and just nothing was working and. Um, basically, and right yeah. around that time that that was going on, um, I'd actually gotten saved about a year before that. I think mm -hmm. it was around 2007. I'd gotten saved at a church that we started going to. Um, mm -hmm. And even in the midst of all that, even when we started dating, he was like, hey, you know Jesus, you know Jesus. I'm like, no thanks. I don't want any part of that. But I so I, Yeah, I yeah. wanted her to be saved, but then I didn't want <laughs> right. her to stop sinning. I, it was, I mean, I was, you know... We it was like I wanted her to, I wanted to make sure she was going to heaven. But, right, yeah. right. So then I ended up getting saved. God called me and I was like, I said yes to him. And I was, I, I got a Bible. I was trying to, trying to read the Bible, trying to understand, you know, God and all this stuff. And right around that time is when things started getting really, you know, rough with the, the drinking and just, you know, you not being satisfied mm -hmm. with where we were in our lives. And um, so that, that led to a pretty big downfall. Uh, you know, in our in our lives, and I was a terrible uh, leader. I think you know, just looking back, I would say like she was kind of wanting. She was wanting us to go to church. She was wanting us to to mm -hmm. get closer to the Lord, and I just wasn't interested at all. Um, and uh, so anyway, you know, I finally got to a point where, um, well, let me just say that. You know, it, it was it was very damaging for her. It was very damaging, obviously, for our marriage and our family. It was, um, you know, she was very faithful and loyal and tried her best to, you know, pray for me and be there for me and help me any way she could uh, for those three years. I mean, really, it was just, I think she was probably crying out night and day for God to, yeah. like, take this away and, and end this, you know, 
uh, addiction that I had and just heal us and heal our family. And right. so, uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? Maybe? Yeah, I mean, with the, with the small amount of faith that I could muster that I even knew that I had, I would, I would pray for him and just beg, basically beg God to heal him, to make him stop drinking, to let him just see, like, hey, we just want to be a family. We want, you know, I want my husband, our, our little boy wants his dad, and Jake was around two or three at the time. Um, it started getting really rough, and um, I just remember crying and crying and crying all day every day uh, for you and just wanting you to come come back and just be a part of our world. Um, but he couldn't. He just, you couldn't because you, you just weren't ready. You weren't ready yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that was, that was what well, it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, just it's not something you can do on your own, I think, yeah. t too. And, and so you have to um, basically get to a point where you surrender your, mm -hmm. yourself to the Lord. And But anyway, um, you know, that, that basically that three years, what, what I was trying to oh, get you to <laughs> was that three years basically brought you to a point of brokenness. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. after yeah after three years of that, I finally just put my hands up and I was like, I'm done. Um, I want to go through the process of, of leaving and, and just permanently cutting ties. I had tried that in the past, like, oh, we'll separate. And I just never really felt like I could just cut from him. And I just felt like I was being so damaged and it just wasn't good anymore. So... Basically, I found some scripture that validated me, and, and I would I remember I would open the Bible and be like, okay, well, there's my loophole to divorce him, and then I would shut it, and I would kind of tell God, like, hey, this is what I'm going to do, and I didn't want to hear him say anything, because I knew in my mind, and I knew in my heart that that was not what God wanted for us, and I went and even found different pastors and different people, and just whoever I could find that would validate what I wanted to do. Um, and so I basically did that and turned away from God almost completely, um, just slowly more and more and more, but to the point of completely turning from God. And I think that I experienced so much loneliness during those three years that I was craving some attention and I wanted to, you know, basically go out and, <laughs> it's hard to talk about, <laughs> go out and get attention and so I began to drink and take pills and um, go to bars by myself and you know just lived a really destructive life and I did that for about what eight nine ten months somewhere around there um, well yeah and and the the really uh, you know what felt tragic at the time was at that moment when she was turning away from me and turning away from God God did something in me and he actually drew me, you know, to himself. And I just, I got, I got so broken, you know, and, and it was like, I remember literally telling her, um, Hey, I'm going to this, I'm going to this place called the foundry. I'm going to, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, I'm surrendering everything to God. I just, I, I don't want to do this anymore. And I, you know, but she had heard all that like a hundred yeah. times. And so the, the really weird thing is I knew it was different that time. But there was no way for me to convince her of that. I was not. Like, yeah, you know, I just was like, I heard all that. I've heard it all before. But it yep. was actually true. It was different. It was different. It <laughs> yeah. was true. God was really doing something in my life. And he had got me to a place where, you know, I was a prodigal. I was, um, you know, I realized I was in a pig pen. And, I, you know, the Bible says that he came to himself. That is ex that's exactly how I would describe it. It's like my eyes were open and mm -hmm. I realized, like, oh, my gosh, this life that I've chosen for myself is horrible and all I have to do is go back to my father's house yeah and so anyway um you know I did that and and I'm excited about it I'm calling her and I'm like hey you know like I'm trying to tell her there's something going on and she did not want to hear any of it I mean it was like a still wall had gone yeah. up in between us and, and over her heart and there was just no getting in it didn't matter what I said right and just like she had prayed all those prayers and cried out to the Lord for three years, I spent the next eight, nine months crying out to God yeah. all day, every day for, you know, basically just for her to turn back to God and, and for us to, you know, our, our marriage to be restored and for us to, um, yeah. And you wrote me letters and he was, it was like, he was, you were trying to lead me and trying to do all these things that I had craved for so long. And I was just like, I don't want a part of this. I just didn't want a part of it. And in my mind, it's like, I knew that I wanted to parent Jake with you, and I wanted to be your friend and all this stuff, but mm -hmm. I just romantically felt like, I literally felt like I could never love this person again. There is no way mm -hmm. in the world that I will ever have 
feelings of love in that way and, and like a marital love for you. I just knew that there was just no way. Yeah, no I, remember, way. I remember you telling me that. And yeah. I remember you, you know, saying all, all of that yeah. about wanting to parent Jake together and all of that. She was trying not to be bitter and stuff. But I, mean, I was. She was. Yeah. She was trying not to be. Yeah, and I was escaping bitter bitterness and resentment through, you know, drinking and taking pills. Yeah. And and all the things basically that I had prayed that he would stop doing for so many years, I turned into into that person that I never wanted to be, and um, just basically lived a life um, of just total sin and destruction and just apart from God. And I'm so thankful that I'm still alive. I mean, there's just there's so many things that could have just really went horribly wrong for me. So I'm just so thankful that um, God pulled me out of all those. I might be wrong, but I feel like I should say here, like, she was taking, she keeps saying she was taking pills. She was taking pills that the doctor has prescribed for her. So, like, you know, um, just, Anxiety. just because, yeah, yeah, just because a doctor gives them to you doesn't mean they're mm -hmm. okay or right or good. I think, okay. I think there was, like, you tried to, you, you've talked about before how, like, you were able to justify doing that. Yeah, because the doctor gave it doctor, to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but anyway. Yeah, I was not buying any kind of pills illegally. <laughs> I was, they were actual prescriptions and, yeah. yeah. Well, um. Anyway, uh, so, you know, that whole time, I really, you know, was really believing God to move and bring bring us back together. I just knew God was going to do something. I knew mm -hmm. he was going to step in. I knew, you know, I pictured all these, like, really dramatic ways that God would step in mm -hmm. and, like, like, you know, I mean, just crazy, crazy over-the-top stuff, like, you know, that would um, stop our divorce from happening yeah. or whatever, you know, that, like... You know, I don't know, lightning strikes the courthouse or something. I mean, I don't know. Just, I don't know, I probably prayed all kinds of crazy stuff. To God. I mean, I was desperate, you know. I was like, I was hurting. I've never hurt like that in my life. And, you know, when you're when you're a person who's addicted, you'd like, you've been masking your pain for years. Yeah. You don't even know what it's like to feel pain. And all of a sudden, well, you got to feel all of it and you got a bunch of it, you know. And it was just, I don't know how to describe it. It was, you know, I mean, I don't know if it was comparable to the pain you went through, but it was. It was more painful than anything I can yeah, imagine. Probably. I, mean, I feel you know, like mine was worse, but... Probably, <laughs> probably, <laughs> it probably was. Yours was longer and probably worse. Yours but, was probably shorter and more intense. I don't yeah, know. yeah. I mean, and there was no reprieve from it, really, right. because, you know, like with, with the other three years, there were times where things might that look, yeah, look like I was really okay. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. But, well, anyway, um, so, you know, I cried out to the Lord mm -hmm. to stop the divorce. And then it didn't happen. And, you know, we walked, we went, I remember, I'll just never forget this. We, we were in a court, you know, we had gone to this court room, courthouse thing. And, you know, the I didn't have an attorney, but there was an attorney there that that, that knew me and knew who I was. And he was just kind of trying to help. But, um, you know, um, we basically told him we didn't want to fight about anything, you yeah. know. and. Yeah. And I was still, up, up until that point, you're all, he is saying, "Hey, you don't have to do this. Don't please don't do this. Please don't do this." And I was yeah. like, "Mine's already done." Yeah. done. yeah, yeah. And you know, so we told him we didn't want to fight about anything. That we just wanted to, you know. And I told, I even I told the attorneys, I was like, "I don't want this to happen." And they looked at me and said, "It takes two people to get married, only one to get a divorce." <laughs> I'll yeah. never forget that, and it was just so heartbreaking to hear that, but it's true. And um, anyway, we. I remember we we got up in front of the judge and you know I think she gave me a chance she said do you want to say anything before I rule on this and I just you know one last time I just said you know you don't have to do this you don't yeah. have to do this but you know I wish you all the best in life if you do you know and that's all I said that's all I could yeah that's all I could get out and uh Sorry. Um, you know, and so anyway, that was it. It was done. I walked out of there. And um, that was in January of 2013. Yeah. yeah. And so I think I walked out of there thinking like, no, it's not. I still was thinking, no, it's not over. Like somehow this can't be the, you know, final. But then within a day or so, I, I finally just came to a place where I said, you know what? It is over. There's nothing I can, there's yeah. nothing else I can do. And I just, I said, okay, Lord, you know, she's, it's good. She's gone. It's, it's over. And when I accepted that, um, 
somehow God worked through that acceptance to heal me because within a couple of weeks I was, you know, not just okay. I was thriving. Like I was, all the pain was gone. I was healed. Jesus had, you know, basically filled up my heart and filled me with joy and made me realize, and it wasn't that I didn't care about her or anything like that, but it just, what he made me realize is that all I needed was him. That, you know, I did not need her to be okay. I, I had I had him, and that's all I needed. And I really, at that time, I had literally nothing except for a few sets of clothes and some Christian books and a Bible. Yeah. And I would, I'll just never forget thinking like, okay, I have nothing. I have some clothes, some books, and a, and a, and a Bible. And, but I've got Jesus, and I've got everything I need, and I feel happier than I've ever felt in my mm-hmm. life. Um, and so I, you know, I think me getting to that place was very important for, at least for, you know, for my healing and probably our healing. Um, but, but fortunately the story does not end there. And so we're going to take just a really quick break and (laughs) there's going to be a little, you know, message and then, and then we'll come back and tell you, um, how God brought us back together and he'll, he'll live. Yeah. But then God, (laughs) God. we'll tell you that story. (laughs) We'll be right back. Hey everybody, I'm Chris McKinney. Hi, I'm Shannon McKinney. And together we own and operate Called Writers Christian Publishing. We're a new Christian publishing company and you know several years ago I got the idea and dream to help Christian authors Mm -hmm. uh, to get their message out. Basically I saw a lot of Christian authors who had a calling from God and you know maybe a gifting, maybe an anointing and they just had a you know a God-given message uh, that they knew they had to get out but then they, they needed somebody, they were a hand, and they needed to connect to an arm, yeah. you know, uh, in the body to, to get that message out. And so I didn't see a lot of um, ways uh, that, that, you know, existing mm-hmm. avenues for them to do that. And so we just, we wanted to, um, we wanted mm-hmm. to change that. And so we prayed and said, God, give us a way to help yeah. those Christian authors to get their message out. And so that's what we're working on. That's what we're doing. And um God has blessed us in, in several ways to, to be able to do that. Right. Um, but what we really need, what we would really make our day is just if you would hit the subscribe button. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, just go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We can we can use that to bring you good Christian content, uh, yeah. you know, things that minister, encourage, help, and inspire. And uh, it will also, you know, just help those uh, authors reach the people that God has called them yeah. to reach. And, uh so yeah, I think that's that's it. If you just hit the subscribe button, well, it'll be a win-win. Yeah. You'll, you'll benefit, we'll benefit the authors, everybody. Right. Huge win-win. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, we're back. Um, so, you know, this this part of our story uh, is, is the part I really like to tell. Yeah. Um, so what happened is that, a, a, I guess, you know, even after they make the rulings, the paperwork has to go through or something, mm-hmm. but... Uh, we'd gotten to a place where our divorce was had been final for about 10 days. Uh, and strangely enough, I didn't even realize it was final. I, didn't, I don't think I had gotten the paperwork yeah. yet or something. But anyway. So this would have been, what, February 2017? I think it was, yeah, or early March or late February. And mm-hmm. so anyway, um, I had come home for uh, the weekend. I was still living in the rescue mission that I was talking about. And I was almost done there, but I had come home for the weekend. And um, my son, who was, I think, seven, six or seven at the time, he uh, he had a little league baseball game. And, you know, of course, I always want to go to his games and everything, but I was doing really good. You know, I was mm-hmm. feeling like I was on top of the world. But there was a part of me that... And that, we haven't, well, him and I haven't talked since the... Since the divorce, since yeah. Since being at court, and that had been about two months. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we had any kind of contact. I don't think all, we did. Probably not. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway... Yeah, yeah, we had not because the I was struggling with whether or not I was going to go to the baseball game, and the reason I was struggling is I thought, you know what, I'm I'm, I'm feel like I'm I'm healed, I'm doing really well, but I don't want to go back and see her, and then anything, you know, like I don't want to move backwards in this healing process. Mm-hmm. I don't want you know to like the heartbreak or the pain to come back or something. And so I just had that concern about that. Um, and let me jump. So, and right around that time, um, I all of a sudden out of nowhere, which of course is God, but I, but out of nowhere in my mind at that time, I had been tapering off of the anxiety medicine slowly just to try to you know wean myself off of it. And I had, I believe, I had kind of stopped drinking 
like a few weeks before that game, maybe a couple weeks before that, and I knew I was just trying to stop taking the pills, and I think I was even trying to quit smoking mm. at the time. It was just kind of all at once, and I don't okay. know if it was the finality of, of the divorce, like, oh, this is over now, and I, I don't know, but something something was going on. Yeah. Later, I can explain why, but that was kind of what was happening at that time, and I remember... Um, I knew that you were home that weekend. I knew you had a pass to come home, and I knew it was one of Jake's games. And so, in my mind, I was thinking, well, I mean, just I'll let him go because I don't want you to be, we don't need to be uncomfortable, and you'll just go. Mm -hmm. And we ended up talking on the phone. One of us called each other, I can't remember, that morning of his game. Maybe, but I, here's what I do remember. Here's what I do remember. I made the decision that morning, and, and the way I made it is, um, you know, Jake kept asking me to go to this game. And I said, and I, but, you know, he, he, he knew the whole thing with us. He had lived it. And yeah. so I told him, you know, here's the deal, buddy. You know, Daddy's doing really well, and, and it's not that I don't like Mommy or that I, you know, yeah. hate her or anything like that. I just don't really want to be around her right now because I'm afraid it's going to bring pain back back into right. my heart and so mm -hmm. um he just he, he was such a sweet quiet you know yeah. little kid that was he was so thoughtful and he would sit there uh he sat there after i told him that and he just was really quiet for a long time and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden he goes well um dad i said yeah he goes she's not dating anybody and i was like <laughs> okay buddy i was like i don't <laughs> You know, I was like, that's not it, you know, <laughs> you know, and so I explained like, that's, that's not the issue, you know, and, um, and then, you know, a little while later, he just kind of says something again and, you know, he says something like, dad, and I, yeah, <laughs> he said, um, you know, she, she's not mad at you anymore. She's not, she's not mad at you, you know, or so, something along that line where he was, he was just trying to think through all this and he was trying to think whatever he could say to you know he wanted me to go to his game I, I don't I don't think yeah. he had any any um you know plans other than just he wanted me to go to his game and so um so I said well I'll tell you what buddy I'll pray about it and if I feel like the Lord wants me to go I'll go and uh so I did pray about it before I went to bed that night and I woke up that morning you know four in the morning or something having a dream and it was a very um you know um, some dreams are like more real and more vibrant, mm -hmm. more alive yeah. than others. It was like that. And, and, uh, in the dream, we were sitting there together at the baseball game and, you know, there was nothing significant going on other than everybody was happy. Mm -hmm. We were all very happy in the dream. And it was just, it was just one of those dreams where I, I don't think I'd ever had that before. Um, uh, may have happened one other time before that, but I knew this dream was from the Lord. And I well, and as soon as I woke up, I said, "Okay, Lord, I've got your answer. I know I've got your mm -hmm. answer," because it was just, it was just some. I don't know. I can't describe like what I felt, other than like knowing that God was telling me, "Hey, just go. It's gonna." <laughs> it's gonna be okay. So anyway, uh, <laughs> this is our first time telling this story in this way, so this is a little bit emotional. <laughs> um, so I went, I decided to go, and, and, you know, I guess that's when I called you or texted you or whatever and told you, hey, I'm going to be there, and, you know, hopefully we can be friendly or whatever. I don't know what was now, on the I remember on the phone, we, you and I had talked okay. for a couple of minutes, and it was, I remember my take of it was, wow really enjoyed talking to him. That was really, just really pleasant. And I just enjoyed hearing your voice. And I remember that. And then, um, so we were both, you said, no, you should come, you should come. And I was like, okay, well, yeah, I guess I'll come. And I got all fixed up for Jake's game and okay. do my hair and makeup. <laughs> and, you know, I'm still going to look at Like, I didn't, I had no clue what was about to happen, but I still was going to let you know that I was looking good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you missed out on no I'm just kidding <laughs> so we get there and I remember seeing you and I just remember looking at his eyes and seeing something totally different that I don't think I've ever seen before in your eyes and um and just a joy that was in his eyes and a peace and just like I just knew he was different I just knew that there was just something totally 
radically different. I had seen seen you on and off through that last eight to ten months, and I never saw that, and I saw it that day, and I remember you were like, well, you can you can hug me, and I'm like, oh, I don't know, and like, it was kind of awkward, but we hugged each other, I remember that. Yeah, I, now, I don't know if that was the first thing that happened, um, Yeah. because I don't know, I don't, my memory of it's not perfect. It's been a long, <laughs> what I do remember perfectly, and I'll never forget it. it was, you know, I, I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday that uh, we were we were sitting together. Yeah, we, we sat next, we sat to, next to each other for some reason. I don't know why, but we were up on the bleachers. We're sitting next to each other, and somebody's <laughs> playing footsie with me. Right? <laughs> like, I just like I just looked up. I mean, she had been kind of smiling and nice yeah. and stuff, but then all of a sudden she's like playing footsie with me. I think my foot was just barely touching. No, 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 yeah, no. Okay. She, was, she was just kind of flirting with me. She, you know, I looked down, I looked at her foot, and I look up, and she's kind of like smiling at me, like letting me know, yeah, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just smiled back. I didn't know what to do with that. I just thought, wow, she's beautiful. Aww. She's smiling at me. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, you yeah. know? Can't, can't find anything wrong with that. And then we look down right around that same moment. We look down, and in the baseball game, there's these old concrete block dugouts, yeah. and they have little holes, little like windows in them. <laughs> and we look down, and we see our son looking at us through the through the hole, and he's smiling, and he's just you know. Um, I'll, like, I'll never forget his face, just looking at us, just like he looks oh so happy. wow, like <laughs> my parents are sitting next to each other, yeah. and they look happy, and they're smiling, and it was just. He had the it was just like an image face. that you'll never forget. Yeah, and he kept doing it. No, like, <laughs> yeah. He kept going every time they would come back in. He was, yeah, they still over there. And I, and I know at that point we ended up uh, walking over to another area, kind of like away from everybody, and talking for a little bit. And at that point, I invited her up to my brother's house. We were all going to go up there and eat. celebrate your birthday because mm -hmm. this was on March 9th of 2013. Your birthday was okay. in three days, so you were home for your pass, and mm -hmm. they wanted to celebrate your birthday. Yeah, Thank you while you're there. So, I'm, and he's like, come on. I'm like, oh, this is kind of weird. Like, I felt like his whole family was upset with me. I mean, rightly so. I mean, I had been, like, off living a sinful life for the last 10 months. And so that was going to be weird and awkward. But I just, I was just drawn to him. I was drawn to you. And I was like, yeah, well, let's go. And yeah. So I, went, I went with you. And I don't know what I had in mind at that point. I don't think I was thinking that we were getting back together or anything. Yeah. Um, I just thought, hey, this is nice. Maybe we're, you know, it seems like we can actually hang out and it's yeah. okay. And nobody's like, you know, upset or hurt or, you know, maybe it's a good thing. And um, so so she came. She said yes. And we ended up talking. And uh, I remember we went outside and talked. And... Um, do you want to talk about that conversation? Yeah, Do you remember? Yeah, I remember just being outside with you. I think it was dark outside already. Mm. Maybe not. I don't know. I feel like it was dark outside. We were at your brother's mm. out, out on the front porch, and I don't know what we were talking about, but all I remember is you basically letting me know that you were okay without me mm -hmm. and that you felt like the Lord said, you know, you did everything you could. Now you have a choice to make. Like, you can go out. Basically, like, God freed you to go date other people. Mm. And you were you were kind of sharing some of that with me. And I remember thinking, oh, what? Like, you're not going to date other people? I mean, we, we just got divorced, you know what I mean? While, like, I'm living the most simple life ever. And I'm over here saying, no, you can't date anybody in my mind. Mm. But I remember just feeling like, oh. It was almost like, you know how... When you're dating somebody, it's like when that person's pursuing you and pursuing you, and you're like, back up, I don't, you know. And then when they stop pursuing you, you're like, oh, I want you now. Right. You know, yes. Felt like God that. used a junior high trick to bring my yeah. wife back to me. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. He used a junior high mind trick on her. Yeah, you know, like, I think God just revealed to me that, mm -hmm. hey, he is different. He's been sober for eight, nine months now, and there's something different. And I was just beginning to see it. And it was almost like I had just made the biggest mistake ever by going through with a divorce because now I had, I had lost you and you were done fighting for me. And I just remember those moments just, oh gosh, I had so many emotions already. I was just a mess. I was already totally broken, but God was on the path of healing me. And so. Yeah. And what I remember about that conversation too was, you know, I had, 
also mentioned like, hey, I'm I'm living for God now. So as soon as I find the right woman, I'm getting remarried. You know, like I'm, it's been hard being by myself for the last eight months, and you know I have no interest in, yeah. in sexual sin, and so you know. <laughs> It ain't going to be long. As soon as I know, as soon as she knows, we're, you know, I'll be remarried. And so I remember us talking about that. And, you know, here's the, here's the really neat thing. I wasn't trying to manipulate her no. at all. Mm -hmm. I was just sharing with her where I was. And, yeah. you know, like we were just talking. I mean, I wasn't trying to make anything happen yeah. or I didn't have an agenda. Yeah. Um, and I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think it kind of scared me. Yeah. And yeah. so basically you, you, left and went home. I left and went yeah. home and I remember emailing you and I, I think we've kind of shared some of that stuff. Um, the different, well, we were emailing back and forth. I remember just being at home, just in my bed, just crying and crying and crying. Like what, like what just happened? What have I done? What are we doing? Are we, are we connecting? Like there was just so much emotion going on. And basically ever since that moment, you know, we, we, we decided like, Hey, we love each other and mm. we want to make this work and God was doing something. He was starting to bring healing and, and those kind of things to both of us and to me. And he just let me see that you were different and you were changed. And we just like, we jumped right back in mm -hmm. with each other from that moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You, you basically turned back to the Lord at that, that same night. Yeah. You, when you yeah. were crying out, you were basically saying like, Hey, I don't want, the, I don't yeah. want the sin anymore. I don't want any of this. I want you. And oh, by the way, I also want you to bring my family back together. You know, I want, yeah. I want and um, you know, he answered it. when she she had basically wrote me uh, some emails that night, and I think I still have them somewhere. But you know, she was at that point saying like, "Hey, I'm 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 trying to turn back to God, and I'm, I'm I want to I want us to get back together, basically." Yeah. And uh, you know, so obviously, you know, I had to think and pray about that just to make sure, like, okay, this is not this was not. No, I was, uh, yeah, for like an hour. No, <laughs> sweetie, Aww. you remember it different than what, what really happened. Oh, okay. it, yeah, no, I didn't actually tell you for sure until oh, like okay. a couple of days because I just wanted to pray about it. I wasn't yeah. not. It was not that I didn't want to or whatever. It was just like, is this the right thing? Yeah, and, you it know, was very all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it was not. Um, yeah, it wasn't like I don't know if I'm on. <laughs> it wasn't like that at all. It was just me. I wasn't there was I wasn't making an emotional decision. Right. I was trying to make sure that that okay is this is this what God wants yeah. us to do? And you were at a place where you you could make a non emotional decision right. at that point. Yeah, God had brought you through all those things. Right, and uh, yeah. but anyway, so when when uh, I think we hung out the next weekend, mm -hmm. you came up and we all we we hung out, and then a few days after that, I was getting ready to leave the. Uh, the foundry, which is a rescue mission where, where I was living for those eight, nine months. And, um, so when you leave, when you're, when you're leaving, when you finish the, the, the program, they, they do like a campfire and they kind of send you off and they let you give a speech if you want to and stuff like that. So, um, I had kind of worked with some people and, and gotten some things put together and, uh, and I mean, the, like there was probably so, I don't know, more than 100 people, maybe, you know, yeah, between 100 100 and 200. There's a lot of people there. And that was my first time going there because the whole time that you were there, I never came to visit you because I had no reason to. So right. I had never even been there before. Right. Um, until that, that night. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, they let me give my speech and I kind of, I don't even remember what I said really. I think I talked for a few minutes and then I, boom, I busted out a ring and said, hey, will you marry me? Yeah. Uh, and and be my wife again and she said yes and <laughs> so we've been together ever since and yeah. our uh our marriage is wonderful and that doesn't mean we don't have have issues and problems we do yeah we spent about i don't know a good six seven months of getting back together going through a lot of painful things together because we just we had so much pain that we had to just deal with and yeah go we had to go through a healing process yeah. together but even even in that we we like our love was solid yeah like it was, we were committed yeah to working through yeah and we um you know we had a firm foundation um and so um well i hope that that story encur encourages other people we yeah. hope that that story encourages you know, if you're going through difficult, if you're married, you yeah. anything difficult, your, your marriage is struggling, no matter what you're going through, there's always hope. Mm -hmm. um, there's always the, the opportunity uh, for forgiveness and healing and reconciliation. Yeah. 
And even and, if you don't think that you want it, you know, I, I just I truly believe that God loves marriage and he loves your marriage and he loved our marriage and even even though we, we completely broke it and destroyed it, God had another plan for us and um since then we've had two more children. We now have a so our, our our son that was seven at the time, he's now almost fifteen. And we've been back married for seven years ish. Mm -hmm. for, yeah. Seven years. Um two thousand thirteen, yeah. Yeah. So, so a little over seven years. And then we we also now have a five year old son and a four year old son. So God gave us two more children. He mm -hmm. restored our marriage. He gave us a marriage that was better than the first one. Yes. Um, way better. The first one is Oh, it was rough because we were two broken people coming together trying to be married and we mm. just weren't ready for that yet and so he gave us a better marriage he restored it gave it to us better than what we had and then he gave us two more children yeah. and and that our oldest son got to live through all that and has two parents that love each other and we make out all the time in front of them and they're just like <laughs> oh they just think it's so nothing cool. weird and nothing, no, nothing weird like we kiss each other they're yeah. just like they smile because yeah. their parents are together and your children need for the marriage to work. They just, it just is going to set them up for success in their marriage and the future generations to come. And God just, he doesn't like divorce. And I know that there are people that, you know, don't have the story that we have, but there is hope for you if you are going through really tough times um, to just keep praying and keep praying and don't stop, don't give up, just keep on going with it because God has something better in store for you and, and he wants to restore your marriage if it's if it's going that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did it for us, he could do it for you. Yeah. And uh, even if you're yeah. not, <laughs> not willing at the moment. I <laughs> we didn't do anything to yeah. like deserve it or earn it. Um, there were a lot of prayers that were yeah. prayed over the years that eventually, you know, those those yeah. were answered. And so I think, um, you know, I, I think even though, like, we got to a point where we didn't even want them to be answered anymore, yeah. right? like, I don't, you know, so anyway. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we hope that encourages people out there. And um, I love you <laughs> very much. And. I, I think I think that's all about all I want to say about it yeah. right now. I can't think yeah. of anything else. Well, we hope it uh, mm -hmm. encouraged you and blessed you. And yeah. um, well, you know, what? let's let's pray. You want to pray for their marriages? Sure. Yeah. You want me to pray? Or you pray. Well, how about you do it? Okay, I'll pray. Father God, thank you so much for allowing us to share your story. This is a God story, and we just thank you so much that we got to be um, a part of all this. Lord, I just thank you so much for restoring our marriage and just giving us a brand new marriage that is good and filled with joy and peace and just your love and that you're the center of our marriage. God, thank you for just what you've done in our life. We just pray and just ask that you would do that for the lives of others that are listening right now, God, that um, where there's brokenness and hurt, God, that you would just come in and just heal all of that, Lord, that you'll just turn things around for their good, Lord, and that you'll just restore and just rebuild and mend their marriages, God. I know that you love marriage, and so, Lord, and you, and you hate divorce, and so, God, I just pray, Lord, that you would just restore marriages today, God. We just thank you so much for everything that you do for us and what you do for others, God, and we just love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yep. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Maybe you're watching this video and you're thinking, yeah, some of that makes sense, but I just don't know about all this God stuff. We just wanted to take a minute to tell you a little bit about the God that we know and serve. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, God created the heavens and the earth and he created humans on the earth and he created us in, in a perfect paradise. Um, and so the God that, that we know and serve, he, he doesn't, he's not real big on rules. He doesn't like rules, believe it or not. Yeah. He, uh, in his perfect paradise, there was only one rule. Unfortunately, uh, humans broke that rule and that's when sin entered the world. And the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, what, what is sin? Well, it's just breaking God's law. So, you know, God is righteous and he's perfectly righteous, and in his eternal heaven, it is a perfect paradise where there is no sin. So what that effectively means for us is that we can't enter into heaven when we leave this world, um, at least not based on our own righteousness, because we we have sin. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if you've ever told a lie, um, God says that's a sin. 
you know, if you've ever felt lust in your heart for, for anyone that, you know, like sexual uh, attraction for anyone that's mm -hmm. not your spouse, um, and you've, you know, given into that thought yeah. on, and on some level, then that that's a sin. Um, what else? If you hate somebody, yes. um, that's a sin. I've done, I've done all that stuff. Yep. Yeah. All of it. Uh, stealing any, if you've ever stolen, I mean, it could be something really small, you know, it could be, it could the, the, yeah, the value is not <laughs> yeah. what matters. It's just, you know, it's, it's a breaking of God's law. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the penalty for that, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And so what that means is that there are basically two options when we leave this, this world, we go into eternal life or we go into eternal death. And so that, that eternal death, you still exist. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, there's no life and there's no joy and there's no peace. Uh, there's no love. All of those good things that we get to mm -hmm. enjoy in this world, they are not there. Um, in, in the eternal death, the place that the Bible calls hell. And so, um, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't want to go there. We don't want you to go there. And, mm -hmm. and the, the, the wonderful news is that even though naturally we're all headed there mm -hmm. because we have sin, God has made a way for mm -hmm. us to avoid that fate. And the way that he made is that he sent his son, Jesus, to die on a cross and take the penalty for our sins. Mm -hmm. So I think the best way to think of it is, is basically we owe a debt that's eternal. Yeah. We cannot, there's no way to ever pay it off. Um, and so this debt is so big that we actually can't even pay it ourselves or, you know, the way to do that is, 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 is through eternal death. I mean, it's not, not anything we can actually, mm -hmm. uh, take care of any other way. Right. So, um, but here's the thing, Jesus steps up and says, you know what? I'll take their penalty for, for them. I'll pay their debt for them, you know? And so you get off totally free i mean it's you know yeah. you're scot-free you're guilty you stand before the judge guilty but then he says oh but somebody else has already paid your penalty and so mm -hmm. you're you're considered righteous and so um there's one thing that we have to do it's a it's a free gift um so god's word says that uh salvation is a mm -hmm. it's a gift of god in ephesians 2 9 it says it is a, it is a gift of god but we have to receive that gift so mm -hmm. Just like somebody comes and tries to give you a package and you go, no, I'm not signing for that. I'm not taking yeah. that. That's not, I don't want that. You keep and it. And they're like, it's a gift. Right. No, I don't want it. Yeah. No, no thanks. It's or. A, yeah. Well, or you can receive it. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it'd be just like um, if you owed a huge fine at the court and some guy standing there says, hey, I want to pay your mm -hmm. fine for you. And you go, no, no, no. I'm going to pay it myself. And he goes, but you don't have a million dollars. You can't mm -hmm. pay it. And you go, well, I'll figure it out. I don't need you. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like that to, to refuse this yeah. offer that God has given all of us. And so, um, so don't refuse it. You know, just all you have to do to receive his offer is basically to say, you know what? I have sinned and mm -hmm. I confess that and I recognize that I need a savior. And, um, I recognize that Jesus is the only savior. He's the only way to heaven. Um, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Mm -hmm. No one comes to the Father except through me. And Acts 4.12 says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So mm -hmm. Jesus is the only way. Yep. He's the guy who's standing there saying, Hey, I'll pay your, I, I've will i already paid your debt, but you just yeah. have to receive it. He's the guy it. standing behind you saying, Hey, I'm right here. I'm knocking at the door. Like he's yeah. literally on the other side of the door of your heart saying, Hey, I'm here. Just open it. Yeah. And that's all you have to do. And even if you don't understand it or even know what to believe just yet or anything like that, it's just a simple step of saying, Hey, I recognize that I need, I need you, God. I need you, Jesus. And saying yeah. yes to him. And he'll, he'll come in and do, do all the other stuff. Yeah. The yeah. Bible uses the word receive. We have to receive his mm -hmm. gift of salvation. Yep. And so basically, uh, you just, you just pray, you know, it's usually the way it happens. You just, uh, you just take a minute and pray and I'll try to lead you through that prayer real quick. So you basically, uh, you just say, God, I recognize that I have sinned and that I need a savior. And I recognize that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And so right now I just ask, um, that, that you would forgive me of my sin and I receive what Jesus did for me on the cross. Mm -hmm. I receive your free gift of salvation and I give my life to you. 
I want you to have my life. It's it's yours. I give it to you now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah. And the Bible also says, and this is the really neat part. Um, let's see. It says in Romans 10, 9, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so that's effectively what, what you do with, yeah. that, with that prayer if you mean it. Um, and one other thing that I kind of wanted to mention is just if you watch the video and maybe you feel, you know, far away from God, maybe you grew up in church, um, but you, you know, you just, it's been a long time and you really haven't, you don't have much of a relationship with God. I know when I was like this, mm -hmm. I would pray every now and then when I needed something, you know, um, yeah. but I didn't really have any kind of relationship with God. I just want to encourage you, like you could at any moment he is he is standing ready to just receive you back you know yeah. just like the story of the prodigal son uh it's the prodigal actually comes to himself and realizes he can go back to his father's house and and the father's been there waiting the whole time with open arms and in mm -hmm. fact as soon as he sees him coming down the road he runs with with open arms and so yeah, he never says, like, you idiot, what have you been doing? Where have you been? Why have you been living this way? And even if you're living in just complete disobedience to God right now and you're, you know, maybe you're having an affair or you're drinking and taking pills or doing drugs or whatever it is, mm -hmm. all you have to do is say, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. God, please forgive me. And instantly, he's going to forgive you. And he doesn't even remember all the stuff that you've done. He just... He's like, yeah, come on, let's 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 be forgiven now, and yeah, he will fully restore. He did that with us, so he'll do it for you. And there's nothing special about either one of us. Yeah. <laughs> well, you want to walk them through that prayer? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which one? Uh, that for, come back. Yeah, okay, for, yeah, you know, returning to the Lord. Yeah, yeah, Father, I just thank you so much for bringing me back to you, Lord. You, your word says that you leave them, the ninety nine to come and search for the one. So, Father, if there's a one out there that is far from you, that is drifted away, that knows you but has forgotten your love for them, Lord, I just pray that you would just call their spirits back to you right now, Father that you would just bring them back into the Father's house right now and just forgive them of everything that they've been doing and just wash them clean and just get them um, ready and, and willing to serve you, Lord. We just ask for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.